Greetings, good people. Today is Wednesday, March 10, 2021. This is our midweek uh, message, uh, our exploration of our Lenten theme for Lent week three. In the beginning of Mark, we heard earlier in January, Jesus' mission, as he describes it in Mark. This is the time of fulfillment. The reign of God is at hand. Change your hearts and minds and believe this good news, that God's reign is at hand. God's presence is present. And so what we're doing during this time of Lent this year is looking at five ways in particular that we see God's presence in the life and ministry of Jesus and in our life today. So you may remember in weeks one and two, we talked about God's presence through Jesus' ministry. And for the first week, we reminded ourselves of the acronym that we often use at Prince of Peace, FIFTH, F-I-F-T-H, for five things that Jesus' ministry was exclusively involved in, feeding, including, forgiving, teaching, and healing. We talked about how those ways are where we and people encountered God and people continue to encounter God when those things happen today. Last week, we looked at the passage from Luke where Jesus reads from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, talking about, well, the, the Spirit of God is upon me to proclaim um, good news to those who are poor, proclaim release to those who are held captive, recovery of sight to those who are blind, and release to those in prison. And so we talked about how you know, Jesus' ministry was a ministry of release, a ministry of seeing anew, a ministry of changing of mind and heart. And so we remembered that God's presence is with us in those ministry actions as well. When there are change of minds and hearts to the truth, to the way of love, when there is seeing something anew, when the good news have something, when the poor have good news, something of good news brought to them, of which they can experience and take part in. When those who have been held captive by something are set free. And it might not be a, a forever set free, it might be a moment by moment being set free, which is an experience that many more of us have, but that God is present in those times. So that's the first two weeks. And so today we're talking about how Jesus and God's presence is with us, Emmanuel, God with us. When a cross is lifted up and carried for another, when a hard thing is done so that, that another may have life. So this comes to us, well, in all the Gospels, actually, um, use this phrase, but I'm going to read today, which we heard a couple weeks ago on Sunday, actually, uh, but this passage here from the eighth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Then Jesus began to teach that the promised one had to suffer, be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and religious scholars, be put to death, and rise again three days later. Jesus said these things quite openly. Peter took him aside and began to take issue with him. And at this, Jesus turned around, denying the disciples, reprimanded Peter. Get out of my sight, you Satan. You're judging by human standards rather than by God's. Jesus summoned the crowd and the disciples and said, If you wish to come after me, you must deny your very self, take up your cross, and follow in my footsteps. If you would save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll save it. What would you gain 
if you would win the whole world but lose yourself in the process? What can you offer in exchange for your soul? And so Jesus is telling us that if we are Jesus' disciples, we are to take up the cross, take up that hard thing so that others have life. We see in Jesus' ministry his continual action about bringing life, whether it's through inclusion or feeding or forgiving, teaching, setting free, helping people see anew, changing hearts and minds. And that doing those things might be hard. And in fact, we see that Jesus bumps up against resistance. Resistance from the religious authorities, resistance from his neighbors in his hometown even. Resistance from uh, political authorities. Lots of reasons why Jesus doing these things would raise some concern by others. But Jesus continues to do it nonetheless. And so whenever Jesus is doing a hard thing, and we know he does the ultimate hard thing of dying for justice, dying so that sins would be forgiven, dying to show that death is not the end, that there is life after death, that there are new births, rebirths throughout our own lifetimes as well. And so, friends, Jesus is saying that God's presence is with us whenever we pick up that hard thing that we do or that has been done for us so that we might see anew so that we might be fed, so that we might be forgiven, right? And so we may have experienced it ourselves, or we may have done it ourselves for another. Whenever bearing a heavy burden is carried by another, God is present when it is for the giving of life, the fulfillment of life, for the other. Parents know this very well, right? Parents do this frequently, do quite a bit for their children. Do that hard thing of waking up in the middle of the night when their child is ill or frightened again. Whatever it might be, we see this frequently when our parents did it for us or when we have done it for our own children. Those of us who have been engaged in the hard work of giving forgiveness and working towards reconciliation. Oh, hard work. But God is present there in that work, even if it's not uh, perfect in our engaging in the work, in our receiving the work. The spirit of the living God is breaking in, is present. So, um, uh, sometimes uh, when we allow ourselves, for example, to be inconvenienced right now um, for public health, you know, the varieties of precautions that there are. I don't know how many of you, how many times have walked up to the front of the store and had to turn around and walk back and get your mask, right? But we do these things out of love for the other. We do these things. We are worship, continuing to worship as we are at Prince of Peace out of love for the other. I know some of you are kind of like, whoa, rah, 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 whatever, you know, but it's about love. We're taking on an inconvenience, worshiping in a different way, those of you who are choosing to come, and um, to do it out of love for the other. We're taking on a hard thing, a difficult thing, and frankly, it's really not that hard, right? Um, most things are as hard as we make them. Um, so, but we're worshiping online. Soon, Palm Sunday, we'll start worshiping outdoors. Yeah, it'll be chilly. Yeah, but you can go to a football game or all those other things, right? We can do that. So we're going to come get together and be able to be back together, at least outdoors. So we continue to wait and look and create other ways to be safe 
indoors so that it is safe for everyone. See, that's the thing. When we do the hard thing so that everyone can participate, not just a certain few, not just a select few. Jesus' ministry is about inclusion. It's about everyone, right? And so we are doing that hard thing. So I want you to ponder. When have you noticed someone doing a hard thing for you, picking up something across, picking up a difficulty on your behalf? When has that happened? Sometimes we don't always notice it. But if you're married, look to your spouse. Start there. Right? And that the Spirit of God is working through them to help do this. And then look, when have you done it for another? When have you done a hard thing that has made a difference to them? So that's our that's our um, question this week. You know, we're using these little fabric triangles. I forgot to bring one over with me here. But to bring the fabric triangle that we're making this giant banner to talk about all the ways God is present with us. And this week, on the bottom of your triangle that you choose for this week, at the bottom, you'll write a word, a phrase, a sentence in the fabric marker that we've given you in the bag um, to answer this. Tell of a time when you did something hard that made a difference to another. And you don't need to tell the whole story, just a phrase, you know. I showed up. You know what it means. We don't need the details. God knows what it means. You could, if you can't think of a time you've done it for another, but I'm sure you can, think of a time when it's been done for you. Right? And so Jesus has showed us that God's presence, God's kingdom is breaking in when the, the cross is taken up for the life of another. So, my friends, I hope you'll recognize this and, and can see this and continue to look for this. Um, if you're participating in the Pen Pal program, that's the question in this week's card. We invite you to complete the card and send it to your Pen Pal. You know, it's still not too late to sign up to be a Pen Pal. It's still, we're only halfway through Lent, so there's still some more time to participate, and uh, you could do that. Friends, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks that you have indeed done the hard thing of lived the life of a human being and experienced all the difficulties that we do. And you experienced the betrayal and sin of others, the lack of love, the lack of understanding, the greed. You experienced that upon your very self. And yet you continued in your way, continued to do the things that brought life, even though they brought you death, because you trusted in your Abba, who would redeem you and restore you. So Lord, we ask that you would help us to carry our crosses, help us to have the trust in our Abba God who redeems and restores us through your love. All this we pray in your character of your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessings, friends. See you soon.